very soon I will call the Prime Minister uh, to move a motion to record uh, the House's appreciation for the service of our clerk, David Elder. As I mentioned uh, a few sitting days uh, back, uh, everyone's aware of David's retirement, but today is his last day here at the table. And, uh, and we, of course, all want to recognise uh, that incredible service. And I'll just make a few brief remarks uh, at a personal level. Uh, David, I met you a long time ago, in fact, 29 years ago, uh, just after the 1990 election when I came to work in this building. And after my election in 2001, I got to know you a little better and uh, uh, over the years got to know you very well, particularly uh, when you were deputy clerk with my role in committees. And uh, I was very, very fortunate that uh, you were the clerk when I became the speaker and I had a huge learning curve and I've been very fortunate every day since. Uh, I really have. Your encyclopedic mind is matched by uh, first class judgment and also a first class temperament. And can I tell members it is accompanied by a wicked sense of humour. It really is. <laughs> Uh, David, as we recognise your last day here in the House, we reflect on your incredible public service and your service to this House of Representatives. In your 38 years, beginning in 1981, uh, you have seen nine different Prime Ministers, 14 different speakers, 17 leaders of the opposition. But as you know, David, and it might surprise members, David is only the 16th clerk of the House of Representatives since Federation. In so many ways, the wider public possibly don't appreciate the role our clerks play as guardians of our democracy in giving frank and fearless advice to ensure that the rules and the conventions are upheld through the decades, and David has certainly done that. You've been a great leader here in the House of Representatives. You've served your House and our nation with distinction. And uh, David's wife Louise and some of his family are with us today in the gallery. We wish uh, you all the best. David, uh, I'll miss your friendship. Uh, I know you've got great plans for your retirement to spend uh, time with your family and particularly with your grandchildren. We will miss you. We hope you will miss us, but we will miss you. <laughs> <laughs> the Prime Minister. <laughs> Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, let me first move that this House place on record its appreciation of the long and meritorious service to the Parliament by the Clerk of the House, Mr David Elder, and stent to him and his wife and family every wish for a healthy and happy retirement. Mr Speaker, the Clerk is a very humble man, and he is a reminder to all of us who have had the good grace to serve in this parliament during his tenure, whether here or down the road. And there are many who would have had that opportunity. Hundreds, if not over a thousand members who have come through this place with whom he's stewarded. And he has been that gentle reminder of the dignity and great honour it is to serve in this chamber for all of us. There's 151 of us here. Many of those for the first time since the last election. And I remember, as I'm sure uh, they do, because it was only a few weeks ago, but for all of those, whether it was 12 years for me or the Leader of the Opposition, for, for much longer than that, back in 1996, I'm sure we remember that day when we first walked onto this carpet and how special a privilege it was for us. We approached the parliament in the morning, 
You look up at this atrium. You leave the chamber, you see the flag, you nod to the speaker. A reminder of our country, our history and our responsibility to it. It's something that connects us all despite our often very significant differences at either a partisan or any other level. But we are united together in this, and this House is united together today in showing its deep appreciation to the clerk. Because this place doesn't just rely on the beliefs and the courage and the passion and the integrity of all of those who, who come here and the enthusiasms of all of us who have been elected, but it also relies on the dignity and institu institution of this House. The impartiality, the judgment, enthusiasms of those who serve this parliament, whether as clerk or the attendants, sergeant arms and others. Our clerk, the 16th clerk of the House of Representatives, has worked, as the speaker has just reminded us, in this building and the one down the road for 38 years. I'm pleased you've only had nine prime ministers, <laughs> not ten. <laughs> 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 it's his last name, mate. So. <laughs> I can be confident of that. I can be confident of that. <laughs> but in keeping with the tradition of all those years, he has not spoken a word in this parliament in one of these microphones. You won't find any word he's said, um, really, in terms of offering commentary on, on bills or, or anything of that nature in the Hansard. You won't find that. Um, though he has been among us, uh, he has not joined us in those debates, muttering interjections or any of these things. But for 38 years, he's let his actions speak for him in the dignity and the way that he's conducted himself. His judgment, his integrity, his demeanour. Uh, we have seen the true character of the clerk through the very decent, honest man that he is. He reminds us that we are all, from the father of the House to the newest member, only temporary custodians of this institution in which we, we habitate for a time. So can I say more informally to you, David, thank you for your service to our country, to this parliament. You have served it uh, with tender love and devotion because that has been your passion and your service, and we thank you. We thank you for your dedication. Uh, we wish you a very happy and long retirement, and to Louise and your family also, who have earned, <laughs> I have no doubt, um, this retirement with you that you can share with them. And so on behalf of the government, I want to extend our thanks and appreciation for everything you have done for us, for this parliament and for our democracy. May God bless you. The Leader of the Opposition. Thanks very much, uh, Mr Speaker. And I join with the Prime Minister in supporting this resolution, acknowledging uh, David Elder's quite extraordinary contribution as a public servant. The key is that second word, servant. It is an honourable profession, and we in Labor honour uh, you as one of the best. Uh, you've spent 41 years in the service of the Commonwealth, 38 in the Department of the House of Representatives. You've been the Sergeant at Arms twice, Deputy Clerk, and of course Clerk since 2014. On a personal level, I've had a fair bit to do with you as uh, Leader of the House and as manager of opposition business before my current role. Uh, just like, though, your immediate predecessor and unlike an overwhelming majority of the 16 clerks of this House, you've known what it was like uh, to have that role in a minority parliament for a brief period of time. <coughs> that changes the dynamic in this place and it means that your role is elevated in importance uh, by many multiples. Many of us on both sides and over many years have benefited from your advice. You deal with us uh, calmly, in a considered way, always courteous, always impartial, and perhaps uh, most remarkably, and uh, I reflect on myself and the Prime Minister and most of us, I think, patiently, which uh, does take a fair bit of, uh, of character from yourself. Now, one of your roles is to edit practice, and this is your work, the seventh edition. Uh, it reminds us that the office of clerk has its origins in the 13th century. And one of the, uh, and I say to new members, read practice. It will serve you well if you do. 
because one of the things that it outlines is where the tradition of the clerk reading bills, having first reading, second reading, etc., comes from. It's because of literacy levels that many members uh, literally couldn't read uh, the documents that were before them. So it was up to, in order to save embarrassment, uh, this tradition came of the clerk playing that role and uh, practice outlines uh, that great history and of how our democracy has evolved. Your life uh, as well extends to service outside of this place. Uh, people, and I wasn't aware till we did a bit of research, that for two decades you've been involved in the model United Nations Assembly that's held for senior high school students that's held in the old Parliament House. So we thank you for your dedicated service to this parliament and the nation. We wish you and Louise and all of your family all of the best for the future. The Leader of the House. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And as Leader of the House, it's a great delight to speak to the motion. Uh, as has been noted, um, Mr Speaker, David Elder has devoted essentially his entire working life, 38 years, to this parliament. And to give all of the members present a sense of the scale and depth of this commitment to our public service, by my rough calculations, 38 years means that David has spent 1.7 per cent of his working life listening to Philip Ruddock's valedictory speech. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I hope I can add a celebratory tone to this motion by noting that since 1981, David must have seen political slogans pass by him with the repetition of scenes like those outside George Wells's time machine. Thir 1981, David has seen off new leadership, proven leadership, the very catchy 1996 slogan of just plain old leadership. He's seen this parliament choose real change, go for growth, strive for hope, reward and opportunity. He knows when Australia deserves better, when we're heading in the right direction. And he's seen a new way for Australia's future for all of us. He knows about moving forward, not standing still, standing up, standing up for Australia, standing up for your family, standing up for real action, and he's seen good government starting now. <laughs> uh, he is well schooled in easing the squeeze, keeping Australia safe, keeping Australia in safe hands, and building Australia's future. Um, to end your service, David, um, your very significant service as you have means that you are a very significant individual part of the office of the Clerk of the Commonwealth Parliament. And that, as the Leader of the Opposition had noted, is a wonderful history. And if Marvel were to do an origins story for Parliament itself, then the clerk would feature in the very earlier scenes. Um, the Leader of the Opposition has noted those early scenes, but some people date the first official appointment of a clerk back to 1863. And some people, some historians, point to that as the actual origins of modern Parliament. So the role of the clerk has been just indissolubly important to Parliament. And you have proven yourself, I think, individually, indissolubly important to this parliament. And I might just add finally that you've also made a very significant contribution to the future of our region in a, in a very subtle way. Historians writing in the golden age of parliamentary statute express that the very essence of English history might be conceived of as the birth and evolution of the constitutional form and, above all, parliament. And I think it's very clear today that the history of parliaments and of democracies are inseparable, but that that history has not yet been finished in its writing. And right now there are younger and smaller but critically important parliaments in our region and beyond that are evolving and learning and underpinning stronger democracies. And you have made a very significant quiet contribution to those parliaments, which might be more important than all foreign policy contributions of any government from either side. Thank you for your service. The Manager of Opposition Business. Uh, thanks very much, Speaker. I want to join uh, in the comments of the, the Prime Minister, the Leader of the Opposition and the Leader of the House as Manager of Opposition Business. Well, all of the comments except for when the Leader of the Opposition encouraged government members to read practice. We're in a much stronger position if they don't. <laughs> uh, the, throughout most of my time as, as Manager of Opposition Business, David Elder has been the, the Clerk of the Parliament. Uh, I think it's, it's very telling of the, the truth of that word, Elder. Uh, it's, it's very much earned in terms of the, the wisdom of the role that David has brought to it. What the Leader of the Opposition said in terms of when you have a minority parliament, it is really significant the extent to which the clerk and the respect for the clerk for everybody in the room uh, becomes basically the linchpin of our democracy. Uh, because 
both sides, whatever we will argue and quibble with with different rulings, know that whoever's in the Speaker's chair is relying very heavily on the advice of the clerk, and that means there is a consistency in our democracy. It also means the clerk's in a different position to anyone else uh, in, a, in the room, in the sense that the rest of us get to enjoy that we pursue what we want to have happen. Whereas for the clerk, who personally always wants order, um, has to be in a position to answer the question, what do the standing orders allow? Uh, there was one Thursday early in the last term where there were different questions that I was asking the clerk in the early afternoon, uh, where uh, David wasn't that happy with the questions I was asking, but still gave very honest answers, uh, which regard resulted in an evening that we thought was wonderful that David doesn't view as the best day in his career. <laughs> uh, but the professionalism of that was extraordinary. Like, here's the professionalism of entirely saying, here's the precedent, here's the rules, not pursuing what he might want to have happen, but pursuing the dignity of the House and the consistency of the rules of the House. And for that principle to now be something that David has helped provide that support for particularly our nations in the Pacific, goes to the heart of the role that Australia can play. There, it would be difficult to think of a time in our history where it was more important <coughs> for us that governance in the Pacific is functioning well. And in that way, as the Leader of the House said, uh, you have served our nation way beyond the specifics of the role in the parliament. We really do thank you and wish you well. Just before I put the motion, um, oh, I've just got a note from the clerk. <laughs> You just saw the clerk handed me a note. Can I thank you, the Prime Minister, the Leader of the Opposition, the Leader of the House, the Manager of Opposition Business, for the very kind words about me. I wish members and the House all the best for the future. From David. Just before I um, put the motion, uh, I think it would be appropriate that the House do uh, as it did uh, with the retirement of the last clerk um, year, several years ago. And that is, I'll put the motion, but I think it's appropriate that members signify their support by simply rising in their places. Question is, the motion moved by the Prime Minister be agreed to. <coughs>